Hi, so today we are going to actually uh, see what is batch normalization and dropout. These are the very popular techniques that is used with the convolution neural network, also with feed forward neural networks or recurrent neural networks that we will see in future. Uh, but let's uh, set the context first that what does the batch normalization and dropout do. Mm. Also like before like getting into it, I am uh, actually recording it a very uh, without like i'm going to post it without editing it and i am recording it on only my microphone so audio and setup would be not good but yeah let's see uh, so this was the dls story that we were looking out like uh, the um, back propagation was like developed in 1989 or uh, in that area but it was not like uh, dl deep learning was not very used in practice because because like the convergence to the loss function was uh, takes a really long time and we didn't had the very much compute power and so on then uh, like uh, he showed like uh, you can do the training and then uh, people start uh, investing their time in um, learn uh, in new methods and techniques so they started finding new learning algorithms initialization and better activation and also better agglomerization that you have already might have seen uh, so uh, the uh, today we are going to see batch normalization and dropout uh, that would come in uh, in a regularization uh, let's see like what is normalization first So let's see what is mm, data normalization is. Mm. Uh, so we have uh, all these uh, features of a mobile phone and let's see this is the matrix X uh, and these are all the features X11, X12, X13 uh, that is launched within six months. These are the weights. We can see and we can observe here that all the features belongs to a very uh, varies between ranges because like you can see this this is binary value uh, this like looks like it belongs to uh, like um, 100 to 200 uh, range or 100 to 300 range uh, this value is very high this value is um, pretty high this because this is price so we have different kind of range for each feature uh, so we actually uh, before feeding this uh, data into network we normalize this we will see later why we normalize this but let's just see let's understand that we normalize it and I have like already told you about the max mean method to normalize this uh, like uh, you um, there is we have already might have seen this but this is not uh, a new like most a standard way to do this this is called normalization or a standardization like this that is interchangeable but people use it uh, let's just give you example what uh, for this like let's take example of this feature uh, for each feature we calculate the mean uh, the mean mm, is 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 it calculate you just uh, sum it up and divide it by the total number of values uh, you divide it by that and this is uh, to calculate variance uh, you uh, take uh, each value you subtract mean from it just square it and then add, do this for all the values in one feature and divide it by the uh, number of features and then take under root this is the formula of variance uh, it's pretty basic uh, mm, mm, so and to calculate the normal normalization we take each value and subtract it with the mean and divide it by the variance uh, this uh, this way like you can get uh, zero mean and unit variance so this is how you normalize the input before feeding into the network uh, we will see next in the next video